All right, Bill. Did you watch Mission Impossible 2? Yep. All right, awesome. So you saw the movie. Movie? I watched Mission Impossible Season 2. Oh, my God. So, so let me get this straight. There's movies? Yeah. Like seven of them. Huh. Anyway. Welcome back to the Out of Touch Podcast. I'm Chris. That's Bill. And today we are watching Mission Impossible 2 from 2000, directed by John Woo, starring Tom Cruise. So, Bill, what did you think of Mission Impossible 2? This is a weird-ass movie. It sure is. And to be fair, I have some nostalgia for this movie because I did see it when it came out. But upon this rewatch... Man, I forgot how weird Mission Impossible 2 is. Because, like, there's moments when it feels normal, and then weird stuff just starts happening. Weird slow-mo, weird melodramatic music, weird out-of-nowhere, these two characters love each other, just go with it. It's got a lot of, I don't know, like, Mr. X, almost too many sometimes. How many masks are in this movie? (laughs) There's a lot. (laughs) I, I will say, like, I like the opening of the movie a lot. I like, you know, the part where you see Tom Cruise climbing the cliff with no like climbing gear and i'm like tom cruise is crazy he did that in real life probably he would certainly do that now yeah <laughs> i i always like you know when he has like the sunglasses and he throws them and they explode at the beginning of the movie but it's so early 2000s <laughs> it is the movie really takes me back but i mean i'll say this uh you know the the rendition of the mission impossible theme you know it's a little like ex- on the extreme side but i like the sound of it i love it <laughs> it's so cool but yeah mission impossible 2 kind of the black sheep of the entire franchise i've always heard that <laughs> and i kind of understand why these movies at least the modern ones have a more of a reputation for like spectacular stunts and action and well this movie goes about an hour or so before there's any action <laughs> yeah and the action it does have is like weird like that car chase at the beginning of the movie with the car spinning around. What the hell was that? I, it was it was them falling in love. Uh, Ethan Hunt and uh, <laughs> Nia, I think her name is. Yes, She's, they're in love now because the script demands it. Yeah. <laughs> it's very, very weird movie. Um, it is, their relationship is weird. It is. All right, they, they meet, they, they have like almost like a Bond style one night stand. And then it's like, you have to put this girl in the path of her ex-lover or whatever. And it's like, you'd think he was dating this girl. It's like, you, you hooked up with her one time, and now you're, like, kind of in love with her? When Ethan and Hunt... she's also kind of in love with him? <laughs> it's so weird! Listen, when Ethan Hunt likes a girl, he falls in love hard and fast. <laughs> but, you know, it's weird. It, it seems like the MIF boss in this movie... Almost seems like he's a bad guy, and Ethan is kind of like, your plan is, like, fucked up and stupid, and I don't like it, but he does it anyway. I mean, what do you expect when you cast uh, Hannibal Lecter? (laughs) That's true. But he's only in the beginning and the end. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, the whole plot is this, like, you know, Chimera virus, which is, like, a super version of influenza. And, yeah. That's age. (laughs) Yeah, <laughs> whether it's based badly or well is uh, depends on your point of view. I, I mean, suppose. Uh, it's not like that happened in real life. Mm. <laughs> anyway, awkward. <laughs> yeah, so they got to get this uh, virus. Well, actually, they have to get the vaccine from the bad guy because the bad bad guy has the vaccine. He's a former MIF agent as well. He body doubled Ethan before. That's how the movie starts. You think you're with Tom Cruise, but psych, it's not Tom Cruise. Also, why is that guy calling Tom Cruise, even when he thought it was Tom Cruise? Why is he calling him Dimitri? That confused me. I I just assumed that, like, Was that just an alias? Yeah, just because, like, he's a spy. He just has, like, a bunch of aliases? Yeah, and, like, that was the alias that the doctor knew. Yeah, I guess that kind of makes sense, because I guess he's also that one other guy's security specialist. Yeah. I guess at this point, Ethan Hunt's got, like, nine aliases. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, being a spy is very complicated, but I'll... extremely cool, as you can tell in this movie. I don't know. seems like parts of this movie, Tom Cruise is just having a lot of fun. He's kind of like smiling a lot, you know, just being cool. He's got 
great long hair in this movie. I don't think he has that long hair in... Maybe he has it in three, but I know after that, his hair is just, like, normal. So, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I just see trailers for these movies, and it usually just looks like generic Tom Cruise hair. Pretty much. I don't know. It's, it's a weird movie, though. I mean... The plot is kind of like whatever. It's a basic spy plot. Okay. Bad guy wants to do bad thing. You know, in this case, virus. You know, it could have easily been stolen missile or just any kind of thing. You know, it makes sense for this kind of franchise. Yeah. I will say the bad guy is actually like pretty decent in this movie. He already knows how Ethan Hunt works. He's going to go in from the top. Yeah. He's just like, he's going to do something like dramatic and weird. So he's, he's going to do a thing where he's dangling above a thing because we did that previous movie and we got to do it again. Yeah. I guess like the main thing is he knows that Ethan Hunt won't like unnecessarily kill people. He still will kill people, but if he doesn't need to kill people, he'll take that option over just going in guns blazing. He also kind of immediately suspects that, you know, the girl is already like a plant from MIF, like as soon as she shows up again. Because he's like, this is like too suspicious. I That was one thing I liked, that the villain wasn't a moron. That yeah. he immediately was like, this is a bit sus. I'm going to roll with it for a bit because that means I could totally bang her. And if she's bad, I'll kill her, whatever. But until then, I'm going to have some fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of refreshing yeah he's like a pretty <laughs> decent villain um the movie could be better but it has a lot of strange things that happen that i guess we'll just go into before you know everything because like the plot you know spy movie like it's, you said it's pretty straightforward i mean we have a returning character of luther yeah. or luthan i don't know vin rames yeah vin rames i don't know his character yeah name. i think his name is luther Vin yeah, Rames. that's all I know. Yeah. I just know it's Ving Rames. <laughs> yeah, he's the tech guy. He's like the only character besides Tom Cruise who I knew wasn't going to die because I know he's in other movies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Part of me was wondering, like, I was like, hey, does this girl come back in any of the other Mission Impossible movies? She does not. <laughs> <laughs> and the way the movie ends, he thinks like, oh, this is the girl. Like, this this is his love. He's going to marry her. No, never seen again. Yeah. So apparently, uh, I think I read somewhere like, uh, then he, she didn't get along with Tom Cruise. No, oh, okay. It happens. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know anything beyond that. Well, you know, this movie's directed by John Woo. John Woo is known for his style. Gunfights, <laughs> slow-mo, doves. Lots of, I was like wondering, like, still no doves. But then all of a sudden, fucking bunch of pigeons and then a dove. Yeah. It's the pigeons first, then the dove. <laughs> what the hell's with this guy and birds? I don't know. Why are there pigeons there? Because it looks cool, that's why. It doesn't look cool, it looks weird. <laughs> just don't get it, it's symbolism. No, it's not. <laughs> Symbols mean something. This is just pigeons. It's, it's just really good symbolism that you can't comprehend. Because we're clearly just not smart enough to understand the <laughs> mind of an artist. What is this, a Zack Snyder movie? I mean... No, but because it's, it's actually fun sometimes, <laughs> but... That was meaner than what I said. <laughs> <laughs> just saying, his movies sometimes are a little dreary and... And he just doesn't understand Batman. <laughs> that too. But anyway, still like his movies, <laughs> but... Some of them. Yeah. I've never seen any of John Woo's other movies. I know he Face Off, he did in America. I know he's done yeah. a lot of like Hong Kong action movies, which probably better i don't know i mean he kind of turned this into like a kung fu movie at parts yeah tom cruise does a lot of like flip kicks that i'm i kind of appreciate i'm like yeah, there right. was some there was some neat like uh, roundhouse kind of kicks he did towards the bad guy at the end i'm like oh that's kind of cool probably never does that in any of the other movies yeah he, he, he probably doesn't fight as good in the other movies as he does in this one but he does some cool gun stuff too you know there's a lot of like trick shots and stuff going on, which is fun and cool. And then there's just two guys on motorcycles colliding for some reason. I love it. It's so weird. It's so dumb, but it's, like, it is dumb. Like, it would almost be better if they both jumped off the motorcycles and then were doing a flying kick at each other, but they just kind of <laughs> like crash into each other in midair. They just go flying. Like, it's so weird. But yeah, if they did like a flying kick into each other. You know, maybe John Woo wanted to do that, but then producers were like, no. Yeah. 
Tom Cruise is like, I can't do that. <laughs> this is not one of your kung fu action movies. Yeah. This is an American spy movie. But, yeah, you know, th there's just like a lot of weird stuff like that in this movie. And, you know, all the misdirects where... You know, sometimes it almost gets you, at least for me, like the one part where he, it, it, Tom Cruise is talking to the girl and you're like, oh shit, what, why is he like, oh, you got to listen to him. And then like, she goes back in the house and then takes off the mask and it's the bad guy. And I'm like, oh shit. That got me too. Cause it intercutted. Then there was just like another guy who just, it was like also Tom Cruise in disguise. And then the, the, the other Tom Cruise was the bad guy. And I'm like, what's going to do? <laughs> My head was spinning at that <laughs> the, moment. The mask thing. <laughs> they really p played it up in this one. Yeah, you know, I haven't seen any of the other Mission Impossible movies past three, so I wonder how much that does get play in the later movies. But I mean, I always hear that they still pull it out sporadically, so it doesn't go away. Okay. It's from the original series. It's like the one thing they've kind of held on to. Yeah. Someone pulls off a mask. <laughs> well, like, these movies are a sequel to the original series. Technically. Yeah. I remember when we talked about the first movie, they had the original main character. Yeah. Who turned bad for some reason, but it was played by a different guy, so. Right. You could make the argument different continuity. I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. Doesn't matter. <laughs> nobody but, cares. No, nobody cares. Nobody, well, nobody pe below a certain age cares. <laughs> No, nobody comes to Mission Impossible anymore for the plot. They come for the evil Knievel style stunts that Tom Cruise is going to do in the movie. Well, not so much anymore. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I thought these movies did well. What happened to that last one? Oh, wait, now I know what happened. They I think called it was it just like too expensive. You know what I think happened? They, they called it Dead Reckoning Part 1. And people see Part 1, they get turned away. Yeah. People like, I don't want to see half a movie. <laughs> I'll wait for the whole thing. I think that's why uh, Marvel went from Avengers Infinity War Part 1 and Part 2 to Infinity War and Endgame. I think the Part 1 and Part 2 only really worked for Harry Potter. Probably? Yeah. <laughs> May, like, I guess financially it worked for Twilight? Maybe? I don't know. Did it work for... Hunger Games did that crap too, right? I don't know. I think they did. I know. So little about Hunger Games, to be perfectly honest. Nothing but surface level knowledge. <laughs> yeah. I know it's a weird dystopian America, but not America. I, you just, I, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, Mission Impossible 2. You know, it's weird. The The plot is just like kind of like messed up where they're like, hey, uh, we need you to like pretend to be with your ex-boyfriend so we can like find out what he's up to. It's kind of like weird and messed up. <laughs> like, Like realistically... They only needed her for that one scene where they, at like the, she got the info from the racetrack, and she could have got the hell out of there at that point. I mean, yeah, and that's what Ethan Hunt tells her. Like, it's like, okay, you're good. Like, go away. Oh, wait, now. The, now I remember yeah. the bad guy tricked her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> Too many Tom Cruises. <laughs> I know. Because Tom Cruise did tell her, like, you're done. You know, run away now. And then... Flee. Flee for your life. But then bad guy disguised himself as Tom Cruise and said, you have to stay here and do whatever he says. And then takes off his mask and it's like, oh no, it's the bad guy. Which I don't remember his name. Bad guy. Yeah. <laughs> when I couldn't find you, I had to replace you. Sean Ambrose was the obvious choice. I think he's like English or Irish or something. He has an accent. I, I don't know what he's accent. South African or Australian. Yeah. He's He's got an accent though. He's he's he's. Oh evil. wait. I, I just remembered something from this movie. That actor, Duggery Scott, the bad guy. He yeah. was supposed to be Wolverine. Oh, my God. Yeah, and it's this movie's fault that he's not. Wow. Because this movie, this is the one. It's, it, it, the production ran long, and he had to drop out of the part, which caused, caused him to go get Hugh Jackman instead. Wow. His entire career is completely different because of that. Man. This man could have been in Deadpool and Wolverine by now. <laughs> so you're saying that Mission Impossible has been messing with comic book movies since the beginning. Yes, but <laughs> this was a net positive because Hugh Jackman's great as Wolverine. Yes. <laughs> I don't know if this guy would have been any good because he was in Batwoman and that show sucks. Though that's not really his fault. Yeah. Yeah, that, that is a bad show. I mean, the um, first season's bad. They, did fi they, they tried to fix it, I guess, but, you know, I wasn't going back. Yeah. <laughs> Batwoman should be should have been a really cool show about Batwoman like kicking ass and stuff and it wasn't. It's a damn shame. 
they, they, they tried, I guess. But man, those action scenes sucked. They did not have the right people making that show. Definitely not. <laughs> but anyway, Mission Impossible 2. With all its weird camera angles, but cool flip kicks, slow motion. Weird melodramatic moments. Trick shots with like blowing up like bombs and stuff. Inexplicable love story. Yeah. Literally, it might be one of the most ham-fisted love stories I've seen in some time. It's literally just, yep, we had sex, so we're in love now. It's melodramatic. And as a, as a young, I guess preteen when i watched this movie i was like okay so that's how it works <laughs> that explains a lot <laughs> come on <laughs> <laughs> but yeah inexplicable love story i, I still just don't i mean it's like melodramatic and like weird and really dumb actually the more i think <laughs> about it because it's like i had some fondness for this movie and then like rewatching it i'm like I still like it, but at the same time, I'm like, this movie is, like, really weird and bad sometimes. Hey, but you know what? It gave us Hugh Jackman as Wolverine, so for that, it has my eternal gratitude. Yeah. <laughs> I will say the soundtrack is great in this movie, though. All the renditions of the Mission Impossible theme, which is... I saw okay. Hans Zimmer's name up there. Yeah. So, yeah. He always does good work. Hey, Hans Zimmer's doing live concerts pretty soon. Oh. Yeah. But, Yeah. Like, music's good in this movie. I That Mission Impossible theme is, like, one of the great, like, you know, media, television themes it's, for movies. And it was so flexible, too, because it was, like, just a pure espionage theme. But it transitioned into, like, bombastic action theme perfectly. Yeah. And I always like Mission Impossible just for, like, the fact that it's, like, okay, so, like, like England's got, like, James Bond, but, like, America's got Ethan Hunt. That's their spy. And I'm like, I think that's kind of cool. Mm. There's only been one Ethan Hunt. <laughs> I thought Tom Cruise is Ethan Hunt. Yeah, but there's only the one. There's yeah. been a lot of Bonds. Oh, I know. But this is, Bonds are like 100 years old, though. Yeah, longevity. It's, yeah. It means just, something. Well. I know the Mission Impossible <laughs> franchise has been around a long time. It's got seven time. movies, Bill. <laughs> just saying. Seven movies. That's not a lot. Well, I guess compared to Bond. But I'm just saying the concept is kind of cool that we get an American spy, too. So, Yeah, Mission Impossible, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which, from what I know, from this point, the movies do get better. <laughs> like, Well, the next one's directed by J.J. Abrams. It's the only J.J. Ab Abrams movie that I think I actually like. Hmm. <laughs> but... It's been a while since I've seen Mission Impossible 3, because sometimes I think Mission Impossible 3 gets overshadowed by, like, it was Tom Cruise at, like, peak craziness when he was doing, like, his interviews yeah, and stuff. Yeah, that, that was, like, around the time he kind of had that weird, where everyone's like, Ew. Yeah, it was when he was just like, let me tell you about Scientology. Jumping on Oprah's couch, <laughs> screwing about being in love with Katie Holmes, ruining her career. Yeah. <laughs> but we'll talk about Mission Impossible 3 maybe someday. But Mission Impossible 2 is just a weird spy movie trying to be a kung fu movie sometimes. Yeah, it definitely feels like there must have been some behind-the-scenes shenanigans. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if it's like... Because, I, I, you know, John Woo didn't direct too many American movies, and I imagine there was studio head as an executive or just getting on his case. What's with the doves? <laughs> the dove has to fly through the fly flaming door as it explodes. It's his signature, Bill. It's his signature. I guess. It's how you know. Right. I don't know, man. Uh, just it, it, It's weird. The dubs. I, I, I just... I, I get it. It's a trademark. If you go to a John Woo, watch a John Woo anything, there has to be dubs. Yeah. So I can't, I can't be mad because <laughs> people would be mad if there weren't dubs. It's cool. <laughs> I don't know what it symbolizes, but I'm sure it symbolizes something. I think it's just something <laughs> you probably thought looked cool and it yeah. just became a signature. Some directors, they just have signatures. You yeah. know? Dubs. Killian Ice cream Mur cone. Killian Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. But, well, yeah, what else is there to say about, like, the weirdest Mission Impossible movie except go watch Mission Impossible 2. It's fun but weird. This podcast will self-destruct in five seconds. Wait, what?
This is not mission difficult, Mr. Hunt. It's mission impossible. 